One interesting thing that we are starting to see right now is more people are starting to understand the gravity of the situation that's happening with the economy and with the housing market. Fannie Mae, they have been putting together their home purchase sentiment index since 2011. So pretty much a couple years after the last housing crash, they decided to put together this survey that they conduct on a regular basis to get a feel for how the American public feels about the current housing market. And right now, this home purchase sentiment index has dropped for the eighth time in a row and the numbers right now are standing at 56.7 and this is the lowest reading ever guys so ever since they started keeping track 11 years ago this is the lowest reading never been worse so actually to me this is good news even though we just said the word worse it's actually really good because it means a lot of people are starting to wake up to the fact of what's really going on out there. People are understanding that now's not a good time to buy a house. People are starting to realize that the interest rates are uh, not helping when it comes to looking at buying. And in their most recent survey from October, only 16% of the people that they surveyed said right now is a good time to buy a house. So those 16% of people, I'm not sure what they're smoking, but um, obviously it must be pretty mind altering in order to make you think that now's a good time. But the good news of this, that means 84% of the population surveyed thinks that now's not a good time to buy a house. And the more people that are on the same page with that and the more people that start boycotting this housing market, then the better off we'll all be. Because the reality is guys, um, the less people that go out there and try to buy right now, then the quicker this whole thing's going to turn around and prices are going to come back to reality and the market is just going to start favoring buyers even quicker when there's no one out there to buy the listings that are available. So this is all, all around a very good thing, unless you're a home seller that missed the boat, of course. But in contrast, the amount of home sellers that were surveyed, 51% say that it's still a good time to sell right now and that's down from 59 percent that was the old number so the interesting thing about that is i actually kind of agree you know because we do still have a relatively low inventory out there when it comes to listings and if you are a reasonable seller and you know exactly what your home is worth and you price it properly you're gonna get it sold guys even in these conditions it's gonna happen because there are still people out there who are looking to buy for whatever reason it is but I think it is still a good time to sell especially if you bought you know four or five years ago or even longer then you're really going to turn around the property and make quite a bit of money and just because the market is getting flipped upside down on its head right now doesn't mean you can't still sell at a profit. Gonna have to enjoy this nice weather while it lasts because later on in this week it's probably gonna get pretty nasty here with all the wind and the rain. So we'll see. Hopefully I'll be able to still get out here and make videos for you guys during this storm. So, but if not, maybe I'll put together a live stream at, at home or something. We'll see. But uh, you know, I love getting out here and making these videos for you guys and I hope the weather doesn't stop me. But if it does, if it gets that bad, then hopefully maybe just for one day, so. Now back to this survey, 37% of the people who were surveyed believe that home prices are going to go down in the next 12 months. So that's a pretty healthy amount. Obviously it's less than half. So, you know, I think it kind of just shows how much the average person really doesn't know about real estate or the housing market in general. Because if so many people are bearish on the market right now and they think it's not a good time to buy, then how come a lot of those people don't think prices will go down. You know, not nearly as many of them do. But I think it's just because most people that probably took this survey, and they only do a thousand a month, guys. So, you know, every time I put a poll up on my channel, I get more of you guys answering that poll than Fannie Mae gets for these surveys. So be that as it may, it is also a very small segment of the population. 
And I, like I said, I think it just shows that a lot of people really don't know much about real estate. The average person might buy two houses, maybe three houses in their entire lifetime, and that's it. But that's why you watch my channel, right? But for the most part, people are on the same page because you know, 65% of these people surveyed, they think that mortgage rates are gonna continue to go up. And I'd say, you're absolutely right. They are gonna continue to go up. And even Fannie Mae themselves is saying that they think in 2023, the amount of homes that will be sold is gonna go down by 21%. That is a massive amount of decrease in the amount of homes that might could potentially get sold in 2023. And that's gonna be due to the high rates and people just not being able to afford it, guys. And we really have the kiss of death right now because if that wasn't bad enough, the other thing that's really rocking the boat right now is inflation and just the overall cost of living going up. And like I mentioned in my prediction video a couple weeks back, people aren't gonna be looking at buying homes. They're gonna be trying to just make sure they can stay in the one they already got. Whether you're renting or you own the place, most people aren't gonna be looking at moving when, you're, when you have such uncertain times. And if you know you can afford where you live right now, you know, the incentive to move is gonna be very little in an environment where everything else is going up in costs. Now, one thing that people need to potentially watch out for if you are in the market to buy right now are temporary buy downs. And I'm gonna go over what that is and kind of how it works in this video. Basically guys, this is something that was very popular during the 70s and 80s back when we had ultra high interest rates back then. I think the highest the 30 year mortgage rates got were around 18% back in those days. And that's considerably higher than they are today by a long shot. But then again, the median home price back then was only about $78,000. So we're not gonna get into all that again, but let's define what a temporary buy down is. A temporary buy down reduces the home buyer's monthly payments in the first year or sometimes up to the first two or three years. Instead of making the mortgage's full monthly payments from the get go, the home buyer will make discounted payments for a year or more. And if you're doing conventional financing, if you're if you're if you're getting any type of conventional loan, the maximum amount of buy down time that you will be allowed by your lender is three years. So you can't get more than a three year buy down. And so let's just use a very simple example. Right now, you know, the lowest rate most people can get is 7%. And if you were offered a one year buy down from the seller, or let's say you're working with a home builder and they give you a one year buy down with 1%, then the first year your interest rate will be 6% and then the second year it will jump to 7%. Now let's check out how a longer term buy down will work. In something called a 321 buy down, that's something that lasts for three years and it means that the interest rate is reduced by three percentage points in the first year, two percentage points in the second year, and then one percentage point in the third year. So if you are going to get one of these buy down deals, this would be the most favorable scenario for most people because it gives you the most extended period of time with a lower payment. And one reason I want people to be careful with this right now is because this is going to be used more and more as the gap to get people to close on properties. So let's say you made an offer for 290,000 on a $300,000 house. And the seller says, ah, the lowest I can go is 293. I need to get that, that amount, right? So that's a $7,000 gap. Well, in a situation like that, if the seller were to offer a 2-1 buy down, it would be enough to cover that $7,000 difference. Basically, it would come out of the seller's uh, amount due at closing, at the time that the deal closes. And it's basically just like getting a price cut. But here's one reason why this is sneaky because the actual purchase price of the home looks higher on paper than it actually was. So you actually bought the home for $7,000 less than the closed sale will show on Zillow or the MLS or Redfin or whatever. So it is a little bit deceptive, guys. And especially if you get one of these three, two, one buy downs where you're getting you know, three years of lower interest payments, the closed sale price can look significantly lower on paper than what the buyer actually paid and on paper they're going to actually pay the full price but 
when it comes to the closing table, that's where they're gonna save the money. And here's a couple reasons why I don't like this scenario. The first one is you're gonna get screwed on property taxes, okay? Because the actual purchase price is higher than it should be instead of them just you know, accepting a lower purchase price and negotiating it the old fashioned way, they used one of these buy down tricks, okay? And so you're gonna end up paying slightly more in property taxes because your actual purchase price on the house was higher than it should have been. So that's the first reason I don't like it. But uh, an even bigger reason I don't like it is because let's say you go into this and you get one of the best deals. You get the, the, the three, two, one, buy down, right? So only if you're fourth year into owning that house, you're going to pay the full 7% interest rate that you get today. Well, let's say your payment starts off at 2200 and then the next year it jumps to 2500 The next year after that it jumps to 2700 And now your final year, whenever it's time to actually pay the full amount, you're in the neighborhood of $3,000. So now your, your mortgage payment is $800 more a month than it was in the beginning. Now technically, right, your lender approved this and they say, well, you can afford it, don't worry, you can afford the $3,000 a month. But here's why I don't like this idea, guys, because of lifestyle inflation. And we're not talking about regular inflation with the cost of everything going up, that is a problem. But what I'm referring to here is people living beyond their means and you know anytime you give someone extra money like this you know let's say you're saving eight hundred dollars a month on your mortgage payment that's a perfect invitation for somebody to say well i got this extra eight hundred dollars a month i can go out and lease that brand new car for five hundred dollars a month um, i can start going out to nice fancy restaurants and spend an extra two hundred dollars a month there if you give people extra money they'll find a way to spend it so that's my problem with this. And then a few years down the road, you're like, oh, I got hit with an extra $800 increase, but obviously it's gradual. You know, every year you're gonna pay a little by a little more. But the problem with it is, you know, people forget that they're gonna have to pay more. And it's just another way that people can get in trouble financially, which is really the reason why I don't like this. You know, I guess you can call me old school or whatever, but when it comes to buying real estate, guys, that's why I just like the plain Jane, 30-year fixed rate mortgage, or you can do a 15-year fix, 20-year fix, something like that, if you can afford it. That's great too. But the great thing about those is your payment will never change. You're not playing any of these games with the seller in terms of how much you're gonna buy down my rate and when is it going to, and how long is it gonna last and blah, blah, blah. You know, it's just a recipe for disaster for the average person to get into trouble. But you're gonna see more of this as sellers get desperate and try to find creative ways to get people to close on properties that otherwise maybe they can't afford or they're not willing to offer full price on. We got one for sale here. They've been trying to sell this one since August. It has a $60,000 price cut and still no buyers, but this would probably be a good listing to follow up on another month or two and see if they can actually sell it. And real quick, one more reason why I don't like this is because a lot of times they'll, you know, sellers and home builders will offer this incentive as a way to get you into the property because maybe you don't have enough money for the down payment and this buy down might close the gap to get you in. And so if you're one of these people that needs to buy down to get into a property, then the reality is, guys, in my opinion, you actually can't afford it. And that's the biggest problem is it's just another way for people to overextend themselves and get into financial trouble. And in times like this, it's more important than ever to stay out of financial trouble because we don't know what's coming. And even when times are good in the economy, I still wouldn't recommend people doing this. And now that things are making a turn for the worse, I think it's a hard no, but do whatever you want. I just want to make sure everyone on the channel who watches has heard of this and is familiar with how this works more or less and give you some reasons of why you should probably avoid it. My thoughts are if you can't afford the house with plain Jane, regular fixed rate financing and a healthy down payment, you know, I always recommend people put 20% down, but a lot of times people put less than that, but 20% 
means that you have money guys it means that you can afford the house you're buying and probably you still have some money left over after that too if you can afford a 20 percent down payment so not only that but it will lower your monthly house payment so there's a lot of advantages to putting down a higher down payment you'll also have more equity from the get-go there's so many advantages as well as not paying mortgage insurance so you know you can go through a whole list of why it's better to put down a larger down payment instead of a lower one and that's not what this video is about but just be careful guys you guys can do whatever you want you're adults you can make your own decisions use your best judgment go with your gut and if it feels like you can't afford it don't do it because otherwise you're going to end up in one of these buyer's remorse stories videos that i do every once in a while and uh, you'll be next to be featured in there but on the flip side of that there is something that could be a good way to still get a low rate right now if you are looking to buy and that is something called an assumable loan and this is not something that's very common so you know chances are you probably won't be able to do this but basically if you're, you're looking at getting a VA loan or an FHA loan or a USDA loan it might be possible for you to assume the mortgage of another seller who got one of these type of loans to begin with as well. The good thing about that is if you, and if you assume someone else's mortgage, then you're able to actually inherit their interest rate. And with a lot of these uh, government programs, those interest rates tend to be very low. Like there was an example of a guy that did this recently and he was looking at a 6.5% rate, and this was a few months ago too. And he ended up buying this house in September in Virginia and he ended up inheriting the, se the seller's interest rate of 2.75 percent and it was a VA loan and in this circumstance the buyer was able to qualify for a VA loan and the seller had purchased that home with a VA loan and one thing that's important to note about this type of thing is if you're getting a conventional mortgage like a Fannie Mae or Freddie Mac backed mortgage which are the majority of the loans that people tend to get those type of mortgages are not assumable so you won't be able to assume a regular seller's uh, home mortgage if they have just a regular conventional loan so that's something else to keep in mind now if you think this is too good to be true then it kind of is guys because it's very uncommon the odds of you being able to get a deal like this are pretty low but they are out there so it is something that you could potentially look at and you can always also try to get seller financing as well. So when you're looking at listings online, you can look for phrases in the description like seller financing available or mortgage assumption available as well. But there are some downsides to this. Like for example, if the value of the home that you wanna purchase is far greater than what the person owes on the mortgage, say they've owned the house for 15, 20 years and they've already paid more than half of it off, then the buyer would either have to pay cash for the difference or find a lender willing to issue a second mortgage on the property and take a second lien position which is a riskier spot for the lender and during hard times like this it's going to be much more difficult to find a lender willing to uh, jump on terms like that chances are going to get denied by basically everyone because you know look what's happening with the mortgage industry they're laying people off left and right because of this recession and the amount of applications down and the last thing they want to do is start writing even riskier loans so that's a downside to it along with the fact that it's just hard to find properties that even qualify for this to begin with and the other major downside to this actually is from the seller's side if you're a seller but you bought the property with the VA loan, you can actually have a civilian assume your VA loan, but it, it's, a, it's a, actually a major drawback for you. If you let a civilian assume your VA loan, it makes it much less likely you'll qualify for a VA loan in the future. And if the civilian defaults on the VA loan, you'll, you could lose your ability to ever get a VA loan again. And obviously, you as the seller have no control of what the buyer is going to do in the future if they assume your loan. So, you know, getting somebody to agree to something like this is going to be probably difficult. And that's kind of the downside of it. But I wanted to just bring it up because it's a much better alternative 
in most cases than one of these buy down deals or an adjustable rate mortgage, other riskier things that people will do to try and get into a home right now. One other interesting thing to note is that Redfin stock has been plummeting all year, just like Open Door, guys. And we reference Redfin data all the time on this channel. I like looking at their housing market data, but if things keep going like this for Redfin, who knows how much longer they're gonna be in business as well, because since the beginning of this year, their share prices are down 92.9% just in the last 12 months. That's huge, guys. That's right on par with Open Door and a lot of the stock analysts that look at these companies, they don't think that Redfin can make it. They think their business model doesn't work in hard times like this. You know, it worked great when we had this huge run up of the housing market and home prices always going up and people buying all the time. But now that everything's starting to come to a complete halt, Redfin is in big trouble. And a lot of the analysts don't think that they can make it under their current business model. So the only way Redfin could survive in the future is if they completely revamp the way they do business and how they charge commissions and how they bring in revenue. And so this is the time, guys, when you're gonna see big companies like this kind of fold out of nowhere. It's either sink or swim right now for everyone, including big corporations. So, you know, if these guys can't hack it in this market, that should tell you something and really what it should tell you is it just means be careful because if these big companies are getting burned right now, imagine how easy it is for you as the little guy to get burned. That's what I would be thinking about. If you guys enjoyed this video and you wanna see more like it, click the bell notification down below. YouTube will alert you every time I put out a new upload. And if you don't wanna wait for the new one, check out my last one right over here and I'll see you in the next one.